This is Indianapolis coach, Reggie Wayne, and you're listening to the For the Culture podcast. This is the For the Culture podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond, with my man, Jason Spears. And today we are doing part two of this two-part For the Culture Q&A, the draft edition. So I'm going to throw it to my right-hand man and our For the Culture draft analyst, Jason Spears. Jason, take it away. First off, I want to just say thank you for all the questions. Really appreciate all your support, guys, and listening to the show and sticking with us through this tough time. Really, really great questions. I can tell you guys really are into this draft and really following it closely. So let's get into it. First question, who is the guy in round two that makes you say, I'll die on this hill for this pick? I don't know if I'm far enough along yet to really make that proclamation. There's a lot of guys I like. I like some wide receivers at that spot. I like, you know, some defensive players there. But I don't really have a good answer for you because I don't feel like there's just a pick that we absolutely have to have. I think there's a lot of options there. So I'll tell you a guy I like a lot that I hope the Colts get a chance to draft, and that's Denzel Mims. I've mentioned him before out of Baylor. He's a very big physical receiver that can run. I think he would fit in well with our offense. You you have the speed outside with Campbell and, and Hilton. You got, you know, a guy in Zach Paschal, who's very physical, and Mims is kind of a combination of Zach Paschal and Paris Campbell. I mean, he runs 4-3, but he's extremely physical. So if I had to answer the question, I'd say Denzel Mims, but I, I don't. there's not a guy that I really feel that strongly about because I feel like there's a lot of guys that I feel strongly about, if that makes any sense. Do you think Chris Boward will trade 34 for more picks? Got this question multiple times. I absolutely think if the guy that he wants is not there at 34, he will recoup more picks, trade back, and get more picks for this draft. That's just how he works. If he thinks he can get better production down the line and more picks, that's what he'll do. We've seen that many times since he's been here. So I definitely think that if he doesn't see the guy on the board that he wants and he's not crazy about and there's a guy there that's somebody that's you know further down his draft board he's not going to reach he's just not that guy so I think he will trade 34 for more picks but only if his guy is not there how many franchise quarterbacks do you see in this class for me I count Burrow is obviously one Tua is two I really like Jordan Love is three and those are the three guys I like then there's the second tier of guys Herbert and then Hertz and Easton are kind of around the same for me. Like the more I watch Hertz, I feel a little bit better about him, but I'm not a huge fan of Hertz. Not like a lot of other people are. He's kind of a polarizing prospect. I'll get into him a little bit later in this, but just, you know, off the top, those three guys for me are, are guys I think you can build your franchise around just based on their skill sets. They all have great skill sets and they can all do great things. I think, obviously, Jordan Love is is much further behind. But I also think he has the highest upside. I, I think that kid has special qualities in him. It's just going to take a little bit of time for him to learn an NFL offense and go through the growing pains and all that stuff. So, for me, definitely three guys. Just probably not the three guys most people would think. And then the second part of this question, do you think the Colts have a chance at any? I actually do. And the reason why I say that is I've gone through a ton of mock drafts, not only my mock drafts, but mock drafts done by other people, draft nicks or whatever you want to call them, and the quarterbacks are sliding. There's so many wide receivers in this draft, and that is making it very difficult to see where the quarter, and everybody's got a quarterback at this point, so or knows who they're going to take. So I think either Herbert or Love are going to fall either to the end of the first or to our pick in the second. So, yes, I think it's very possible that one of those two guys falls. You know, I think it's it'll be an Aaron Rodgers type of situation. Obviously, I don't think these two guys are nearly as good as him. But back when they took Alex Smith, the 49ers had the chance to take Rodgers, and they didn't take him, and he, and he slid all the way down to Green Bay, which is like near the end of the first round. And I think that could be the same thing for both of these guys. So, uh, we'll see what happens, but I definitely do think there's a shot that the Colts are going to have one of these guys on the board when they pick. There is a legitimate shot at that. Who would be the best wide receiver for our system in this class? 
If I could have any wide receiver, I would probably take Henry Ruggs III just because he's incredibly explosive. He's a much better route runner than people give him credit for, and I think he's going to be a star in this league. Sadly, we're not going to be able to get him. So if you're asking about the guys that I think that will be available at 34, who I think the best guy is, I think it's Denzel Mims. Now, there's no guarantee he's going to be there, but if he is there, that's a guy I would love to see the Colts take. I think they need that big body guy on the opposite side of T.Y., huge upside, great speed, combination of of everything, and just a guy I think that would flourish in our offense. And plus, you know, Rivers is used to throwing at those big guys. So, yeah, I, I like Mims a lot, and I think that's the guy that I think fits our offense the best. Will Ballard consider drafting back-to-back wide receivers with picks 34 and 44? Will he consider it? Sure, he'll consider it. Do I think he does it? Probably not. We have way too many needs. You know, he could end up picking a wide receiver uh, in the third round, for all we know. He doesn't ever do what we think he should do. He does what's best for the Colts. So at 34 and 44, the guys that are there aren't wide receivers, and they're guys that he likes. He's going to take them regardless. So... Back-to-back wide receivers, no, I don't think so. I I would be kind of shocked if he did that. I definitely think one wide receiver, though, is definitely going to be one of those two picks. Any players I would consider moving back in round one for minus quarterbacks? You know, that's a really, really tough question because I think all the really, really elite, elite guys are going to be gone. And to give up draft capital after we've already traded our first, I think we're more likely to trade out of 34 than we are to trade up from 34 just based on what we've seen from Chris Ballard. But if there's a guy that he thinks is a difference maker, like a, a major difference maker for our team, he will try. He, I mean, there's no question he's going to try to improve our team. So do I think it's going to happen? No, but it's possible. I, like I said, I think it's more likely that we get to 34 and he doesn't like what's there, and he trades back and recoups some of those picks. that We we don't have a seventh-round pick, and we didn't have a first-round pick, so he definitely wants to uh, add more bullets in the chamber, if you will. So that's what I expect to happen, but you never know. The draft is always crazy. What are your thoughts on Jalen Hurts? Wow, this is, this is a polarizing kid. I, I like him a lot. He's a great leader. He played well under two incredible coaches. And he's got a lot of upside. I think uh, he's very athletic. He can do a lot of different things. I think that even in his rookie year, you could work him in, you know, and let him do some things because he's athletic enough. There's things I don't like about him, though. And and I'm not as sold on him as a lot of people are. And it's only because his footwork and his accuracy can get really bad at times. And that's concerning, especially in an offense that that really is predicated on short, intermediate stuff and uh, really putting the ball in the playmaker's hands. I'm not sure he's a great fit for us, but I do think he's probably a great fit for somebody else. That said, if he got into our offense and we drafted him, if we draft him, I won't be mad because I do believe in, in the coaching that we have. So I know that if we get Jalen Hurts in here, that Frank Reich, Nick Sirianni, Marcus Brady, all those guys, those guys, they'll work with them and they'll get the best out of them. I honestly believe that. So I don't love him as a prospect. If they see enough to take him, I wouldn't be mad because there's obvi- they, they see something maybe that makes him different, that makes him stand out. So uh, my personal opinion is I think he's probably maybe the fifth or sixth guy that I like, but that doesn't mean anything. It's all about what Chris Bauer thinks. So I do like him as a kid, though. I think he'd fit great in our locker room. He's a great kid. Thoughts on Antoine Winfield Jr., how he would fit our scheme? Well, anybody that follows me knows I love this kid. I love Antoine Winfield Jr. He's a little undersized, but he plays big. He reminds me a little of Bob. He doesn't, I don't think he's as physical as Bob Sanders was, but he can do everything. You can move him around. He can play both safety spots, he can play in the slot. He can do everything. He can blitz. He's a good tackler. I, I think you add guys like that to our defense, it allows our our coordinator, who I think is very good and has been undervalued by a lot of the media and fan base in Indianapolis. He, I think he's done an extraordinary job his first two years with such a young team, by the way. I think you add another guy like that 
it's just another tool in the toolbox. We can do so many different things. You can bring a safety blitz. You can fake Kenny Moore and have and bring different people from different spots. And, you know, so many athletes on the field, you don't know where they're coming from. I mean, it's just, I think having a guy like that, even though he probably would not start, he could make a huge contribution on our team. So I'm a huge fan of Antoine Winfield. I would love it if we drafted him. He's probably my favorite player in this draft. Not the best. But my favorite, he's a great kid, comes from a great bloodline. His dad was a really, really good corner for a long time in this league. Uh, I know he's going to be a really solid NFL player. So he's probably the one guy that I really, really, out of all the guys in the draft that I really love just watching him play. So I would love to see him in our scheme, and he would would absolutely fit what we do. Which quarterback would I rather trade up for, Hurts or Love? Well, if you've listened to the – earlier part of these questions you will know my answer is Jordan Love I'm not a fan of trading up at all though to be quite honest with you just because then we're chasing draft picks you know what I'm saying like we've already given away one we don't have seven if you're trading up to get Love then you're probably giving up both your seconds or a future second and you're chasing draft picks so I honestly think one of those if you're adding Hurts into the picture, I think he's going to be available at 34. So there's not going to be a need to trade up for him. Love, I think you might have to trade up to the end of the first, but I don't know, man. One of like Herbert or Love, one of them is going to fall to the end of the first round. I'm not a big fan of trading up for either one of them, honestly, because I think it sets us back a little bit. And especially because they were we were so willing to move out of 13. I'm not sure how much Bauer really likes Love, to be honest with you. I don't think that's a move he makes. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Who would you rather have out of these three receivers? Mims, Chenault, or Higgins? Honestly, in the order that I would pick that, Mims is, to me, clearly number one. Chenault is probably two, and Higgins is number three. Chenault and Higgins are very similar. I think Chenault's a little better after the catch. Uh, Higgins played in a much better offense with a much better quarterback. So, I don't know. Any of those guys would be good. I think they would fit what we need. I I think they would do a good job. I think those are the type of body types that can help us because we've got speed and we've we've got a little bit of size, but like size and speed, like Mims. Mims especially is the guy just because he has them both. Which wide receiver prospects would you like the Colts to grab in the second or third round? A physical player or a speed wide receiver? Well, it all depends on who who the player is. If Michael Pittman is there and Jalen Rager is there, I like Jalen Rager more than I like Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, Michael Pittman has been rising up draft boards. I do like him, but I like Jalen Rager better, and he's a speed guy. For me, it just depends on the player you're talking about. It's, it's very difficult when you're just talking about a – a scenario with you don't have an actual player to to mix into the scenario. It's just a scenario of, you know, physical or fast. It's very difficult to do that without actual players. But if I could, I'd like to have physical and fast. So, hi, Denzel Mims. Denzel Mims is my guy, so that's the guy I would want. Another wide receiver question. Chenault or Hamler at 34? I think i go Chenault. If we draft a quarterback, do we keep three quarterbacks on the roster? Absolutely not. If we draft a quarterback, Jacoby Brissett is gone. We will either trade him or release him. Pittman Jr. or T. Higgins? I'm going T. Higgins. I like T. Higgins. I like his size. Comes from a great offense. He played with a great quarterback. I think he's I think he's NFL ready. Pittman Jr., you know, he's he's good. He's a good prospect. I like his size as well. He's also really strong after after the catch. So I do like things about Pittman Jr., but I've definitely got Higgins rated higher, so I'd go Higgins. And then Mims or Claypool. I love I like Claypool. Mims is my guy. Although I do like Claypool. Claypool shocked me with his speed. I'll be honest. So I like Claypool a lot, but Mims is my guy. Defensive end or cornerback at 44. I probably wouldn't take either one of those. I, I think tight end. Tight end or offensive line at 44, probably. You know, maybe then you go defensive end or corner at or or tight end or wide receiver, whatever, at 75. These questions are so hard to answer because I don't have a player. You're just giving me a position. And it's really not about the position. It's about the player. If we got, let's say, um, Mims at 34, commit, 
the tight end from Notre Dame at 44. And then at 75, we got an offensive tackle or a really good interior guard. I'd be perfectly happy with that. What do you think Ballard will do at 34? Well, I think he's going to either A, take the best player available that he has on his board, or he's going to B, trade out of that pick and recoup some draft picks because that's what we've seen him do in the past. He's always thinking ahead. You see how he played the Redskins last year for that pick? Turns into the second pick in the second round because he knew the Redskins were probably going to be bad, and they were. So I think he'll look at who he's trading with and he'll make a smart decision. Whatever whatever goes on in this draft, I've learned to trust Chris Ballard. So whatever happens, I know he's doing what he thinks is best for the team. Finally, last question, guys. Why wouldn't we get a quarterback to develop behind Rivers while we can? So here's the thing. If there's not a quarterback in the draft that you like that's available, then you just roll with Jacoby Brissett. You don't just draft a guy to just draft a guy because he's young. I mean, if there's not any quarterbacks there that you like, there's no point in drafting them. You have a draft board for that reason. If there's no quarterbacks that are available on your draft board when you're picking, you're not going to take a quarterback. You're just going to roll with Brissett because when you force picks, that has a trickle-down effect not only this year but the next year. You got a guy you don't you didn't really like on a rookie deal, and then you got him for how many ever years? I mean, look at Josh Rosen. They had to do that all over it, so they wasted two picks, basically. You, you don't ever want to do that. You're going backwards doing that. So if there's nobody available that they like, they should absolutely keep Brissett and roll with that until next year. Hopefully Rivers plays well enough to earn a, a second year, and then they can draft a guy next year. Hopefully they'll find a guy. There will be a guy they like in this draft or the next draft. A quarterback will be drafted in one of those two drafts. So there will be one taken, but it has to be the right guy. That's it, guys. I mean, great questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, man, just, just send me a tweet at ForTheCulture underscore J, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. So, guys, take care, and I'll talk to you soon.